Yeah, and I think the second game we're going to talk about here, Astros hosting the Mariners. I think you got to lean under, if anything, um, with Verlander and Logan Gilbert going head-to-head here. Obviously, the postseason debut for young Mr. Gilbert, but he was pretty incredible um, all season and, and handled the Astros 2-1, and 2.52 ERA in five meetings. On the road, he went 8-1, and 3.16 ERA. Uh, the, the, the Astros here, big favorites in game one, minus 210. Same thing for the series, basically minus 220. As they're well-rested, have their two aces lined up with Verlander followed by Framber here. I'm interested in the Astros winning, if they're going to win this series, to do it in in um, through, in four games or fewer. And that's plus 115. Yeah. Uh, Again, you get it's it's better to bet game one win and the series than just to bet game one at even money. But these Mariners have been tough to figure out uh, as they you know come into the postseason kind of playing with house money. Now they get their big brothers who they they did struggle against in the division. I think losing six the last seven. But that's the kind of thing we see in the postseason where all of a sudden that flips if the tide starts to turn. Intriguing price for Houston to win game one with Verlander, um, you know, who's just a completely different guy than we saw at the the last time he was in the postseason where he actually lost four of his last five starts. Um, but, you know, this season, just out of this world numbers, handled Seattle abs, uh, 3-0 and with a 1.69 ERA at home against Seattle. He had that one blow up in Seattle, but was excellent against this lineup and just Great career number, career numbers across the board. So I think I lean towards Astros and and then taking the series at even money, but plus seven fifty for it to flip the other way after they win this first one. I could see how you make a compelling argument to go that route. Yeah, I took a little bit of Mariner series, um, plus one eighty five. I think it's a little high for me. I. Don't want to fade Verlander because he's punished me all year. But that being said, I still think he's not near as good as his numbers. His estimators are definitely closer to like a three ERA than kind of the, you know, two-ish ERA he's been he's been putting up all, all season. I'm a little disappointed that Seattle is going with uh, Gilbert in game one. I was hoping they would go with George Kirby. I know he closed the other day, but I think that was his throw day. So I think he would have been able to to start today, or uh, tomorrow, rather. Um, well, nothing official yet. I mean, we haven't seen Gilbert listed, but that's what we, yeah. we think it's going to be, yeah. He's just on there on the, on the odds boards. I know that you said he had some success against the Astros, but I don't think he profiles well against the Astros. Um, it looks like a pretty tough matchup for him to me. He's so slider fastball heavy, um, and the Astros are so good against sliders and fastballs. I, I think this is kind of similar to the other series uh, that we just talked about. Kind of the same issue where I think having Gilbert go twice, if if that's what they they go with, it is going to hurt them here. Um, Verlander should do very well. I'm less sure about Framber against the Mariners. I think the the Mariners match up decent with him. They are quite good hitting lefties, surprisingly. I guess when I look at this lineup, I don't think they should be a very great lineup against lefties. They've been pretty good, though. Um, they also are very good at elevating the baseball and hitting sinkers, and, and that's key against Framber. If you are going to pound it into the ground, then you're in a lot of trouble against this guy. Um, I'm really interested to see what Houston does with their rotation. They have a bunch of very similar pitchers after Framber and Verlander, guys who are kind of probably around a 3.5-ish ERA true talent level, something like 3.5 to 3.8, you know, that type of just like solid average, slightly above average pitchers. I'm wondering if they're going to go with like some piggyback systems with some of these guys where, you know, they each throw like three, four innings. I think the pitching overall in this series is pretty close, though. Um, the Astros obviously have the better bats. They have the better defense. But we know how dynamic Seattle's pen is. I think it's just as good as Houston's. It might even be a little better. 
And man, I think the energy in those Seattle games, the home games is going to be absolutely bonkers uh, once they get some home games going. Um, so definitely excited to watch this one. I took a little Seattle, but not super excited about it. But I, I do think the line is a little bit too high. I mean, Seattle is a really good team. Yeah, we talked in the Futures episode about fading the Astros and the Dodgers as those heavy favorites in both league. Uh, I think we're both still a little scared of it just because of how good the Astros have been at winning these low-scoring games. Uh, For me, that's, again, why I think I lean under in the first one here with Verlander on the mound. 